Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back. So our previous lecture was uh, so numerical implementation in the MATLAB, computing the partial derivative of a function of first order as well as second order. And now we really start the evolution equation. This from this lecture we really start solving the partial differential equation depending upon time and the space. So I just start like which we have computed in finite difference method, we have computed linear advection equation, linear advection diffusion equation, we have computed nonlinear equation like a Burger equation, we have computed the viscous form of Burger equation. So we have used the upwinding scheme if it is the unstable with the central difference. So now with the same idea, since it is generalized finite difference method, we use the same idea of pointing or central difference, what we had done in the final difference, we do the similar process and then see the similar features, similar instabilities if we do the approximation in the same way. So now I start with the linear advection equation. So I have already given two times the example. Now again, let us start del rho by del t plus a del rho by del x is equal to zero. A is a constant, so is given. So let me write equation 21.1, the initial condition rho 0 x is, so I consider my domain, so my computational domain because I cannot compute with the finite, in finite domain. So this is valid for all domain minus infinity to plus infinity. But if we do the numerics, so we cannot use from minus infinity to plus infinity, we have to cut or somewhere. So domain omega, I just take AV is some interval. So initial condition, so let me take AV is equal to for example, minus 3 to 3. So I take the initial condition that, so this is my domain, minus 3 to 3, so it is 0 here, I take maybe 0 here, some sine function here is 0. one here, Two here, three here. So it is a minus one, minus two. Yeah. So initial condition rho zero x is zero if minus three less equal to x less equal to zero. Sine of pi x if my zero less equal to x is equal to one and zero if 1 less equal to x less equal to 2. So just put it 0, just put small wave. So we know the exact solution. Yeah, The exact solution remains because it is just shifting. It, may, it remains the same. So it's just, if A is positive, it moves to the right. 
if a is negative it moves to the left that we will see in the numerics uh, in the coming lecture and now since our scheme is a lagrangian one therefore express equation 21.1 in the Lagrangian form. So, what is it? So, our characteristics forms, yeah. So, this is, uh, is the same as the characteristics form dx by dt is equal to 0. Uh, sorry, it is a, so which we have seen in the method of characteristics, and dx by dt is equal to a d rho by dt is equal to is nothing it is 0. So, this is equation 21.2. Yeah. And now, what we need? So, we generate generate grids or I call is as a particles. x i in a b for example so generate n grids or n particle yeah so n grids or n particles x i in a b it means for example i will have my grid point same as in the earlier case so but i am having now the boundary point and the interior point. So, x1 is equal to maybe a and x n is equal to b. So, these are boundary point. Boundary particles. So, I have the boundary particle, this is the 1, so at x1 and this is x of n, these are boundary particle and the rest will be my interior particle. So, x for i is equal to 2 to n minus 1, so I will have my x i is a plus maybe i minus half of delta x. So, I am having these are interior particle. So, why I have I have distinguished between boundary particle and interior particle because sometimes I may have to apply the boundary condition. Therefore, I should know which particle are the boundary particle. There I have to prescribe the boundary condition, but for the interior particle, I don't have to prescribe the boundary condition. Therefore, I have two types of particles, boundary particles and interior particles. Sometimes I need the normal on the boundary particle. So, normal is always looking so the inside the domain. So, that I will come in the coming in the final in, the, in the, uh, the coming lecture. So, at the moment, I do not go to that normal of the boundary particle. So, now this is our interior particle. So, now express initial condition in discrete form implies we can write this part into the discrete form here. So, rho of 0 of i is a rho 0 of x i, rho 0 of x i, and now express
21.2 in also discrete form. So what we get that so dx i by dt is equal to a d rho i by dt is equal to zero. So this is uh, twenty one point three. So what we get here we have two n a system of of two n equations which is time dependent ODE. So this ODE you can solve by any ODE solver. Now just use very simple the use explicit Euler scheme. Use explicit Euler scheme, which gives you that x i n plus one minus x i of n by delta t is equal to a rho i of n plus one minus rho of i of n by delta t is equal to zero. So this both gives you your x i of n plus one is equal to x i of n plus delta t times a and this gives you rho i of n plus one is rho i of n. So what do we see that? This is exactly the characteristic form before what we see that our solution. So we just move the particle from old position to new position with the speed with the velocity a in the time step delta t and then our the solution is the same it is a constant so new value is equal to the old value so here it doesn't change so it means the solution is constant along the characteristics so if you solve we solve this equation numerically we get exact solution yeah so we should not get any other than the exact there is nothing no opening is required because we don't have any derivative. We don't have, you remember that in the finite difference scheme that we had to compute the derivative del rho by del x. Yeah. Then we had always difficulty that this part has to be taken either central difference or if A is positive, the backward difference or if A is negative, forward difference. So central difference was always giving the trouble. But here, the advantage at the moment, the advantage of our Lagrangian equation gives that this convective part is hiding here due to the Lagrangian formulation. It means we don't have any trouble of approximating the derivative. Yeah. So here, what we have, what CFL condition means. So how to choose? Time step in this scheme. So again, use CFL condition. Yeah. So then, what CFL condition means? The CFL condition means that if you move particles, so you have the particle here. So 
you have not always in equidistance if you move this particle from here to here. So you should not overtake this particle, you should not go here. So you should be restricted only if it is not overtaking. It means that you should restrict by yourself the distance between its particle and its next neighbor. Then you, you check for all or you can do the adaptive one such that you we move the particle which particle such that in such a way that it should not cross or overtake its nearest particle. So it is same as in the final difference scheme. There also it was restricted as a function of velocity. Here also we move with the velocity a and it was restricted by delta x. So velocity and delta x. Here it is restricted by the velocity a and the distance between the, the particle, this one to its nearest neighbor. So this is the restriction what we had. And now what will happen that once this particle they move, for example, it has zero velocity here and it has the velocity, so it is sine of pi x. This will move, this will shift. So what will happen? All the particle move. Sometime what it will happen that we will get some type of point which is going close and this point is going far if it moves. So then we may need some type of particle management. It means if the points are very far, then we should add the particle or if they are very close, we should remove that. So that is what we call as a particle management. So what we have to do is that you remember, so I think now what our basic steps, so our basic steps are following. So our basic step is, once we know that basic step, then everything we can follow in the code while coding. First, express the PDE into Form. So that is the first part. Second part and generate particles. So boundary and interior. One may give the flag, for example, flag of i is equal to 0 if it is boundary 1 if it is interior. So you can have the particle index i. If flag of i is 0, you can give it is a boundary particle. If flag of i is equal to 1, it is a boundary uh, is an interior particle. Then in that case, you can just assign, just give your the boundary condition if particle flag is equal to 0. Yeah? That will be easy for the implementation. So the third part. So, write 
initial condition right initial condition in discrete form and fourth part right right Lagrangian form in discrete form and five do prime integration of system of so here what do we get time dependent so if we write everything in discrete form what do we get here from the equation here we get uh, from equation 21.3 so we get system of O O D is in time the fifth time integration so inside the time integration so these steps are always equivalent or always same for all type of all PD whatever we come we do in the next uh, in the next lecture so these five steps are always common so or time integration or inside inside what do we have so we have the time integration here yeah so we run this one do do while so after all the initialization so do while t less equal to t final first compute neighbors or for run for all particle or i is equal to 1 to n first step compute neighbors of i remember i is a neighbor of itself second compute or never of i or never of xi derivative at all it xi if necessary but here we don't have any derivative you see we are in very easy easy way so if we would have derivative we have to compute the derivative here but that will come to the next yeah what so once we compute the derivative we plug into the right hand side and then we update x new and rho new or i so updating means x new is equal to x old plus delta t times a rho new is equal to rho old that's all then assign x new rho new as x old rho old so old means now xn and rho 
So x nu is x n plus one, and x old is x old is x n. Rho nu is rho n plus one, and rho old is rho n. And then after that, what will happen? That if so before the sign, yeah. Here, so you get a new value. Then do particle management. It means add adding removing. It means if there is a hole in between the domain, you add the particle. If they are close, very close together, you remove them. Or if some of the particle cross the boundary, you just remove them. And some particle may come in. You add them. Yeah. So this is called like a particle management. And then, then five. Assign new values. It means rho n plus one, rho new, x new as old value. It means rho old and x old. Then that is finished here. And then you increase your t is equal to t plus delta t, and then you just in this big loop. Yeah. So this is the main steps what we follow. Not only the linear advection equation. So in this case, we have no partial derivative, but what we will get that we may have if there is on the right hand side. Suppose if you have the viscose form, then you have d times of second order partial derivative. That part we have to compute here. So compute the derivatives and we plug here. And after that, we will have here del rho i n plus delta t times the viscose term that we will have. So one thing is that when we add the particle. So so I have the particle here. For example. So in the case there is a hole between this one, so I may have to add the particle here in between, and then I have to assign because all this value have value rho n plus one, all have the value, yeah. All have the value of rho n plus one, but this has no. So we have to this imp we introduce a new point, new grip particles. So again, we look the neighbor of this one inside the edge here, left as well as right here, and these are our neighbor of this this particle. And then we use the same interpolation idea what we have before. Then we do the the interpolation at this point from its neighbor, and then we have here also rho n plus one given. After that, we do. Once we know the new value there, and then we again we can compute the derivative into the next step. Yeah. So we give a new value. We put new value as the old value as a new value, and then we repeat that. So we compute until the final time step. And next, I will show you that what will happen if I do little bit different way. Yeah. Here, this way I get the exact solution that I will show in the numerical session. In the computational session, and next I will just write this little bit in different form. That it is called ALA, ALA, arbitrary Eulerian Lagrangian scheme. And now we wait for. Then we see it for the next lecture. So, so now today we stop uh, with this part. Thank you.